2010, we're very excited about uh, the future of, of this team and the season that, that lies before us. Uh, we've got a unique blend, I think, of experience uh, returners that I think, you know, we've got a strong class of five seniors that I think are going to make a difference. And uh, some new newcomers that we think can help us out. And, you know, we're coming off what we think is a good spring back in the right direction and in, in regards to winning matches, which is... Uh, you know the goal of every coach, but we're in the in the throes of preseason right now. You know we're 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 trying to figure out who can play where for us, especially the new people. So we're we're in that phase right now where we're trying to put together a new team. But we have high hopes and high expectations for a big year. Uh, we defended well, I thought, last year, and the majority of that block of people are back. You know, we have a veteran fifth-year goalkeeper and a rising star freshman, so we should be strong in those areas. It was goal scoring, if you look statistically at what we didn't get right last year, because we had six ties, games that we dominated st statistically. So we score goals and win those games. You know, we're talking about a winning season, which is kind of a return to the tradition for us. We normally are a postseason team vying for the top of the Pac-10, and it's unusual for us to be, you know, left out of the postseason at the end. So the determination is there. I, the, I, I know it resonates with the players that they want to get back to the success that they knew. We, you know, we haven't been to the playoffs since Taylor was a, was a freshman, and I know it's high on his list to make sure he departs the program, leaving it the way he found it, or at least – seeing his last season be a, a you know a championship type of year or, a, or at least a playoff season and Brent Richards for all the talent he has he's looking for his first appearance so we think it's the timing is right converging forces it's all coming together and um, you know we're excited about the work we're doing now and starting our season Kenny, you guys sort of expand on what you were just talking about uh, Um, yeah, I mean, there's just a couple holes to fill. Uh, we have, I mean, majority of the team, we have a lot of veterans returning. I mean, obviously there's a freshman class, but the veterans that are returning are ones that have started and played a lot of minutes in the last couple of years. So it's, I mean, I'm pretty confident in that part. Uh, I mean, just a couple holes to really fill. And I think that last scrimmage that we had really showed us, you know, who can play in those holes and who fits well together and who works the best together. And you know, Dean talks about it all the time at practice, getting your pairs down together, you know, like two center backs, outside back and outside mid, and the two forwards and the two center mids together. So just kind of got to see who, who works well together in those teams, you know. So it's, I think that scrimmage really opened it up for everybody to see how, how we would play well together. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think that another big part of it is just the overall mindset. We had a real good I think winter and spring session last year and we came in I think we've got a lot of momentum from that spring session that Dean was talking about we won all of our college game matches so and I think the attitude this year has been really great in preseason a lot of the guys are are really psyched for this year we're working hard and I think we're going to be carry over that momentum from our spring season and do really well this year. Yeah Dean you mentioned a rising freshman uh, Spencer Ritchie, he's actually not part of this recruiting class because he joined us last January. He came in in winter quarter, so he's been with us two quarters, but this will be his first fall. But Spencer was in our youth national team. He was in that residency program that they have for the best young players in America, arguably this, the 20 best. So he was a member of the U17 national team the last couple years and is now with us. He's, you know, he'll be with us for the first time this fall. and. That's quite a battle. We've got a fifth-year senior, but an extremely athletic, a little inexperienced, as you'd expect, especially at the college level for Spencer. But uh, he's going to make an impact. I don't know when, maybe this year. But we're excited about it. he moves. He moves between the, you know the the sticks of the goal better than any goalkeeper I've seen here ever. Athletically, that guy can cover ground, but you know to stop shots and so forth. So his athleticism is top shelf. That's obviously the minimum requirement to get in a U.S. You know, youth team pool, arguably you're the best in that 20 best in, in your age group in America. And that's a big pool to choose from. 
So we're excited about Spencer. We don't know how soon he's ready, but he's you know been splitting time. He got half the, the game against Simon Frazier. He'll get half again this Friday, and that'll be quite some battle. And the team will benefit from whoever wins that in regards to who wins the starting job and kind of carries through. Whoever wins the starting job, there'll be games for that second goalkeeper because I just think over the course of a season you want to have the team develop confidence in more than one guy should he get ill should he get injured you know it's it you, you got to have confidence in two and I think that that's going to be the case does the team have a thicker strength either offensively or defensively you know or you know I, I would say you know again defensively I think we were fairly strong last year we only conceded 19 goals you look statistically we only scored 19 we got to score in the 30s. You know, we got to pick 10 more up from somebody. Restarts, you know, Brent Richards is coming off a banner summer, you know, and, and he's been our leading scorer the past two years. We've got to build other threats around him so that he can not only do his thing, but the defenses are going to have to worry about others. And, you know, adding Daniel Gray, we have a senior transfer who's an offensive type player. That's two-sided, you know, he's not going to, help you defensively, but he can hurt you, the opposition offensively. So we're right now tinkering with how we can get our best players on the field. He's one of the five seniors, and I'll say, if those, it's the Don James, if those five seniors have not just great years, the best years they've ever had at college, you're going you're gonna to accomplish something special. And I don't want to heap pressure on the seniors, but Mueller's got to play well. All the other seniors, Daniel, I mean, um, Daniel Gray is a transfer senior. He's got to pick up five, six goals for us. You know, Matt Van Houten's got to get a handful. He's an attacking player. Uh, Brad Keller, who's, um, you know, a wide player, he's got to have a good season. And Stephen Fung's the other senior. Uh, the goalkeeper's got to have a great year. So that, that's in place. It's going to take us a long way, and we've got to build the rest of the players around them. Pac-10, you know, we were surprised, you know, for the first time since the Pac-10's been in men's soccer, we were picked last, so that caught the attention of everybody. I've never seen that. I, 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 I thought it was a mistake when I saw it, but, you know, after you vote the big two, the only ranked teams in our conference are UCLA and Stanford. It could fall anywhere in the votes, but it just, there's only six people voting, five, so, you know, one day, a given day, you could end up anywhere, but uh, that's an added motivation. I'll guarantee you, we will we'll turn that thing upside down. We'll be closer to the top than the bottom. If not win it, things fall into place, we could win it. But um, uh, I, I think that that's uh, our non-conference schedule. If you look at last year's, I think it's a notch below. You know, we played Virginia and St. Louis in the opening games last year. This is no disrespect to our opening games opponent this year, but Virginia went on to win the NCAA title and St. Louis made the playoffs. We've got opponents with not that type of profile not that you know uh, they're going to be easy and we haven't done well in Portland's tournament we haven't done the normal uh, performance that we're used to and get off to a quick start we've stubbed our toe down there the last couple of years regardless of the opponent so we're not looking past anybody but you know just like the women just like Leslie said your non-conference schedule hopefully you pick up some solid wins more wins than losses that's for sure and roll into the Pac-10 with some momentum because that's what you want, and we plan on doing that. There's not a game on that schedule that I don't think we can win, and we'll win most of them if we play our cards right. That's what that's uh, that's my thinking. Brent, talk about um, what you're going to do this year. You had a great summer, like Dean said, for the Timbers. Your MVP of the league, the team was undefeated. How are you going to bring that into um, your college, your junior season, and translate it here at UW? Well, I think one of the things that made my summer team extremely su successful was that the attitude was that we were going to win a national championship. That was the goal the entire time. There was everybody was working really hard, and I think that's what I've been trying to do this preseason. All ever since I've come back to Seattle, is really get the whole team in that mindset that we're going to do great things this season. And so, if we can get everybody on that same page, then I think we'll be successful. Thank you guys. Outstanding. Thank you guys.